<laughs> <laughs> Hello there. I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Show. My guest, Paul Safdel, uh, extraordinary artist, sir. Hello. Nice <laughs> to see you, Mark. Thank you. For so this is exciting. Yes. I've been uh, really excited to uh, get you here. And now we have a new graphics title package. So now I can finally get you in because last time you took a look at my graphics and you said, I'm not going to do this show. <laughs> said, well, no. you know, it's all, about, said, it's all about production values. It's, it's all about it? production yeah. values. It's all about production values. But now <laughs> we've upped our game, so here you are. <laughs> it, it, anyway. I have to bow to you for that. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was, hey. Uh, anyway, let's, let's uh, you do extraordinary art and Let's. I'm going to let you describe what you do a little bit. Mm. Well, extraordinary is a big word. Um, I'm uh, interested in our place in the world and um, the elements that are a part of us and all around us and somehow representing that from an inner place, um, sense of being within the landscape and experiencing the landscape, not copying the landscape. So there's very much a sense of channeling to my work, uh, an organic nature to the process, um, and um, yeah, I find every day extraordinary because I'm never quite sure of how it's going to evolve. There's so much watching and um, observing and allowing. Your 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 colors are amazing. Uh, you do large scale, so the, the dynamics of your work is is powerful, mm. uh, but uh, one of the most interesting thing to me about it is your knowledge of materials, and let's let's talk about what you use, how you got there. Mm. Um, well, I've always been interested in going beyond the surface, um, and depth and light, and how color creates the entire illusion of our world. It cloaks everything, changes everything with just a temperature change. Um, and materials uh, around us, the architectural materials, things that breathe, the um, traditional materials like stone and metals and, and woods. Uh, and these days with painting and acrylics and, and process, there's so many advances in materials that for a long time now, um, 15 years, 15 to 20 years, I've been exploring how to integrate some of these more um, industrial materials into the works. And, and I found that the sources of, of making paint, you know, marble dust was always used in making gessos, and limestone was always used in fresco. So I've deconstructed a lot of paint and plaster formulas, and I'm adding raw pigments and making my own mixtures and there's always a varying different reactions. Um, so I've been loving exploring that palette and um, you know I've often thought that even the abstract expressionists of the 20th century if they had the materials now that we have at our disposal rather than just enamel ha house paint and such things like this and you know um, that the work, the surface qualities of the work, you know, um, our opportunity now is to really advance that. So I get really passionate about how the surface of a work and canvas well, breathes. Well, there's, there's a jeweled quality, if mm. I may say. Uh, and it has, a, there's a tactile quality. Mm. Uh, and one of the things that we, we talk about a lot is there, the difference between a, a photograph and 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 the, and the object, the sure. real object. Yeah. And your work really is about the real object. Well, yes, and and you know, in some of the formulas and earlier pieces, I was incorporating a lot of quartz um, powder and sand into it, and quartz conducts an electrical charge. Um, and so you're standing in front of a piece, and you know there is a breath, there is an energy, there is a physicality, um, a life force to it. And it's very hard to replicate that in one single photo because even moving to the left or the right of a piece and seeing it from different directions, the whole surface does shift. So I have some blues which turn purple and um, there's this exploration of the other side of color, um, 
within the spectrum of darkness. You, black isn't just black. It's made of very deep blues, reds, greens. And so you can see these shimmering changes across the surface of a piece. It's deep magic, and it's interesting because there's such a difference between a piece of art, even if we even less just limit it to abstraction, that will bore you over time or inform you over time. And it's it's there's so many pieces that um, will have an initial impact, and you'll you'll say that's fine, but won't give you that. And it's such an ephemeral thing, but there is a difference mm -hmm. of something that will reveal itself and grow and be ever increasingly um, revealing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and those are the that's the struggle that you're in. Well, I think that's the you know our contemporary struggle with observing a single image and and digesting it within three seconds and thinking that you have a knowledge or understanding the piece. But because the truth about art and life is that much remains hidden from view, and the deeper you look, the more you discover. Um, and so that engagement, that engagement with the, this life form we call art, um, it's supposed to take the mind and allow the mind to travel and uh, explore on its own and remind you of places and dreams and sensibilities experiences somehow within ourselves. And then when, I, when I'm in your gallery, I have the feeling that you didn't make this piece for me, you made this piece for you to share with me, which is, which is a, a, a slightly mm -hmm. different thing. And you get the sense that there is exploration going on, that you're involved in a dance, mm. that you're involved in a deep dance, mm. and that you're you don't want to st st you don't, you're, you're, you don't want stasis you know you can you can yeah. make the same thing over and over and and maybe someone wouldn't if you're not really cognizant of it you you, you could fake it but you there's a sense that you're not that you're really still mm. really looking and exploring mm. and seeing what these materials will do and and revealing things to you and then seeing the the what nextness of it well, I, th I think that's, you know, that's part of the purpose and the joy is that exposing um, of all of those hidden gems, finding, being able to look more deeply within ourselves and around us and find things that surprise us. And if you, I'm repeating the same painting, it's, um, it's a challenge because it feels like there's a regurgitation there. Now, I mean, that's not to say that occasionally I've painted over and over and over the same canvas as I do adding layers yes. so many times yes. that I've painted over a certain sense of composition and, and coloration that we might call an image, and uh, I find the same thing again. Yeah. <laughs> it comes back yeah, to it the comes same. Back. It's like this is wants to this be. This is what it wants to be. Right. Yeah. And, and other times there's a real struggle to actually to go away from what really just wants to be there because it's easy and it's repeatable and to strive to go further beyond that. Um, you know, there can be a tremendous satisfaction at making the same piece and at accomplishing that in even finer ways, like eating at the same restaurant, the same dish yeah. all the time. The more you eat the same dish, the more satisfying it can become. However, you know, this is a big wide world and, and we're still, we are explorers, we are pioneers. Yeah. I mean, I've always, as human race on this rock, that's how I felt and as a, um, a traveler, you know, somebody who's come from far away places and been migrating my studio across this country and the world for the last 25 years. It's like there is a sense of, you know, entrepreneurs are looking to pioneer something and it's a question of looking at really what's been done, what could be done, what shouldn't be done, <laughs> you know, and where you stand within that. So to push forward our language within art, within abstraction, um, within seeing, and essentially within consciousness is what has like, informed this decision of being an artist. I, I knew I was an artist at the youngest of ages. You know, as long as I've been thinking and 
cognizant, you know, three years old, I can remember, you know, that's, I said to myself, I'm an artist. And I knew I'd been an artist somehow for a very long time, or it was just part of me. So then it becomes a journey to see that unfold with yourself. And so our unfolding journey of life, of realization, the art becomes a mirror for that and an opportunity to see how I shift, change, evolve um, what I think of the world and how I would like to leave something of, of value here, or create something of value here that pushes the language, like I say. And um, I think that some of our you know, great pioneering things at this time is about inner space. Um, sure, we reach the moon and we're traveling to the stars and, and you know, the oceans are being explored even more deeply, though they remain unexplored to a tremendous extent. But the real territory is, you know, who are we? Where do we come from? And people say, I want to go to space. Well, here's news. We're on a rock in space. <laughs> yeah, we're in space. Um, wh one of the things I appreciate about you and um, is you really do know the history, that you really do know the art history, that you do know that you've looked at a lot of art, that you can de de uh, deconstruct it, mm. and that you know what the bar is and mm. how important that is. Mm. Uh, because it's one of the things that we fight against here is being parochial. Mm. And you know, you can, it's, 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 it's fine, you can get away with a lot being par parochial because Mm. Not a lot is being asked of you, right? But uh, we right. It, it's There's a lot of pretty pictures, and it's nice to make pretty pictures. But that's not really the purpose of art, in my heart. Not not yeah. in not if yeah. you not if you're in the the the, the, the large conversation, and you, yeah. you, you're you're a man in the large conversation, mm. uh, uh, really in that mm. arena, uh, vigorously in that arena, struggling mm. in that arena. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think I struggle with the conversation of it in even that in arena because it's yes. um, you know it it's gets convoluted. Uh. I mean, after you know when a giant black circle on a white canvas sells for you know fifty million dollars, where do we go from there within abstraction? You know, yeah. and, and it's not to say that's a bad picture. No, but it's <laughs> but, but where, yeah, do, but we where do you go? go? Where do we go? Yeah. What, and, and is it enough? You know, or has it just you know? Does it obfuscate what art is? You know, and where is the language of consciousness now? Now, I, my grandparents, my parents, you know, there was always art on our walls of the places that I grew up, and um, my grandfather had collected some very nice abstract expressionist pieces in New York in the early 50s um, and uh, you know I've always been exposed to art and even at a very young age I was taken to museums um, growing up in London you know, everywhere and New York uh, so um, I think exposure is everything in terms of the education of art and then once you're exposed there has to be there is something of interest there the more you go I mean I used to run through the museums because children get bored in museums but you stop in front of the pieces that you love and you spend your time there. So I guess the, at the bottom line of it, if you're engaged with the art conversation and you really want to engage with the art that you're seeing, you really have to be pushing where you're going, you have to give it your all, you have to give it everything, and then the other art will talk to you. But before we go there, how do people see your work? Let's, let's make sure we... Get well, this before we run out of you time. You know, the first place, obviously, is the easiest place. It's in your pocket, and it would be my name, uh, paulseftor.com. Okay, that's going to be your first place to get a glimpse of my work. If you're in Monterey, if you're in the peninsula, any time this year, there's uh, this magazine. And um, they were came to my studio and interviewed me. This magazine is Guest Life Monterey Bay, and it's in every hotel room in the uh, region. Um, and they interviewed me and did a nice uh, 
editorial here and um, also another article here. Um, and there's another piece further in the magazine. So you can read a little bit about uh, me, my journey, my process in here. Um, and then, of course, I am very happy to give people um, a showing of my studio warehouse gallery over at the American Tin Cannery, where I spend a lot of time. Um, I'm a full-time artist, and uh, that means that um, you know, I'm mostly working there, but it, I love it when people just feel free to give me a call or send me a text. Um, and uh, Make an appointment. Yeah, make an appointment and let me know that you're on your way uh, so that I can be sure to be and there. And it's not just for buyers. No, I mean... It's, it's for it, someone who really wants to... Yeah, for those who love art and want to experience um, something special and unique. Um, in this area, which reflects the landscape and the dynamism of our time, um, and take away something, uh, an experience, a, a memory, um, and nothing else is is required of, of people other than to. And we to live desire. we live in a place of extraordinary beauty, and extraordinary light. Mm. And yeah. how does that light? Nice question. It, yeah. how, how does that work with you? For, for well, how, how's that? Because it does seep in. Yeah, and you know, Big Sur has, is known all around the world for the quality of light. And even when I first started traveling across America, eighteen, and I'm taking a greyhound um, up the coast, I remember, and and then um, I ver first visited Big Sur. Um, I was astounded that it wasn't actually a. It was hard to find a place. There was no great center to Big Sur. Yeah. But the quality of light is what Im makes Big Sur. Yeah, it's this expanse of, of, of space across the Pacific, uh, the rugged coastal landscape um, that's just you know, such a, a romantic type of painting. But to observe the changes of light in a panoramic view from the, the bright, you know, iridescent blues on the left to the grays and greens on the on the right, all within the same space. I mean, to assimilate this sense of transitional light and how it just shapes our entire world from you know from dusk till dawn and through the night. I, I mean, yes, it is spellbinding to me, and uh, and that is has been a perpetual observation. Yeah. My guest, Paul Sattel, go see his art. Um, it's fabulous, and uh, so happy that he's making it here. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thanks, Appreciate man. it. <laughs>